today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Did a small, strange creature really sneak into her room at night? Or was it connected to a sleep paralysis experience? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. So if you have a real ghost story, would you share it with us? You can call it in at 855-853-4802 or write it in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And remember, if you want to be a premium subscriber, that's up to you. You get advanced episodes, access to the archive, and no commercials. You can sign up through Apple Podcasts and try it for three days free. Or go to patreon.com slash realghoststories or go to ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes. Kathy Gordon is here today. I am. Sleep paralysis stories. Those are, you know, that kind of fine line. Is it paranormal? Mm-hmm. Is it a dream? I don't know. Uh, and I, and you know, I'm always the person who says, why can't it be both? Mm-hmm. That you are paralyzed, but there really is something there. Now, that said, in this story, I would prefer it was absolutely 100% a dream. If this happened to me... <laughs> well, anytime you say small, strange creature, I'm kind of with <laughs> yes. you on that. It's and it like, gets worse yeah. than just a small, strange creature. So if it was really, me, yeah, I'd be like... I choose oh. to believe that was absolutely a terrifying nightmare, sleep paralysis sort of dream state. Okay, well, bring it on. Let's hear it. Okay, so here's the story. It says, my name is Carrie. I've had a few strange experiences in my life, but I'll share the creepiest one first. It's my one and only experience with sleep paralysis and the reason I no longer sleep on my back without a barrier. Now, see, I'd never heard this before. It says like a pillow on my stomach. I don't know why, but that helps me feel secure. And so I've heard about that sleeping on your back is where you you will have a sleep paralysis experience. But I never had thought about holding a pillow. So interesting. And it says I had not either. But so okay, makes some sense in a way. I grew up. Maybe maybe it would be a good idea to sleep with like a knife or a gun or something <laughs> like oh my gosh I've got to, you, you really like a pillow isn't going to be super protection probably but then again probably it's neither a knife or a gun against something but if it gives you that level of comfort it's kind of seriously <laughs> kathy it's like you guys you it's a bad me. idea do not sleep with a gun in your bed. <laughs> Here, it's like you or me not being able to stick our feet out from under the covers like is are the covers oh. really going to keep something from grabbing my foot no, I know, but I in know. my head. So the that other night, I flipped me of over. That. My arm went over the side of the bed. Like, and I went, whoa, "Oh my whoa, god, can't you go know. there!" Like, what? Yeah, I'm the same way. Can't have my arm over the side. No. Even I, like the other night, I was so hot in the middle of the night, and I got up and turned the fan on more. And I was, I get back to bed, and I start to just sleep on top of the covers. <laughs> I can't. I gotta cover my feet up. Anyway. Yeah. No, well, something might touch you. I know. And it could still touch me through a sheet. I know, but I don't know. It's a it's protective so barrier. Same thing. Protective barrier. Same concept. So it says, I grew up about 45 minutes north of Minneapolis in a small rundown country town. I'm very sensitive and empathetic. I have a hard time not taking on other people's emotions. And I have a good sense for bad vibes and places that aren't so welcoming. This area I grew up in always had a weird, dark feeling. The woods near my home had an especially strange feeling. They were swampy with thick marshland, marshland, right? Marshland, yeah. With thick marshland and deep forest. My parents' property was built on old pasture land and the farmhouse still stands next door to our property. No one seems to stay there very long and those who do seem to get divorced within two to three years of living there. Hmm. When I was around 16 or 17, I was going through a really dark time. I was very depressed, doing lots of drugs, hanging out with the wrong crowd, and falling behind in school. One night, I was asleep in my small upstairs bedroom under the influence of nothing. I had to get up for school the next morning. That was my question. Yep, not high. If you were to walk into the room, there was a window directly across from the door, a closet to the right of it, and my bed to the left underneath the window. The foot of the bed faced the closet. I slept with my mattress on the floor because I don't like this space under the bed being open because when I was younger, my bed would shake violently 
and I would have to leap off of it or onto it so the monsters couldn't get my feet. Oh my God, I hate that for her. But wait a minute. But now that the mattress is on the floor, don't you just look under the bed? Well, there is no space. The mattress is directly there. So I taken they took the bed out. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, because so I was going to say, if the bed's still in there, you still have an under the bed problem. Right, so I, okay. I think they just moved the mattress. They moved to, the bed just yeah. out. They're just a mattress. Okay, yeah, right. I don't like that. Anyway, I usually slept with my old giant stereo on low, the kind that had words like hello and goodbye, scrolling across a little LED screen that changed intermittently to show the volume level. The glow from this would light up my small room pretty well. I had also unplugged Christmas lights hanging along the ceiling, and if you were to bump them, they would make a very distinct noise against a wall. I also always kept the door to my bedroom shut when I slept. So I was asleep, lying on my back, and I woke up suddenly. The glow from the stereo lit up the room, and I couldn't move except for my eyes, and I couldn't breathe. I could see the door from my bed, and it slowly creaked open without the knob turning. A small dark shadow in the shape of a small creature similar to the size of a cat slowly slinked in. We didn't have an indoor cat or any other animal of that size. I couldn't make out what it was, only that it was blacker than black, and its vibe didn't feel like any animal I had encountered anywhere. It crept along the wall like a mouse or a rat would from the door to the left behind my stereo, bumping the Christmas light cords and causing them to make that distinct sound of the metal prongs bumping against a wall. My heart was exploding out of my chest and the adrenaline of being scared shitless of what was coming toward me and from not being able to breathe. It came closer and closer and I thought my heart would give out from fear. I tried to move, but to no avail, and I resigned myself to lying there at the mercy of this thing coming toward me. There was a large gap between my mattress and the wall above my head where the floor vent was. The creature approached my head and positioned itself above me along the wall. As if I couldn't have been more scared, it pressed its forehead against mine as hard as it could and I felt my head and neck depressed down into the pillow. I could feel the heat of its forehead against mine. While this was happening, the shadow creature let out an unearthly growl like I'd never heard anything made before or since. I'm not sure how long it lasted, but when it stopped, it was sudden and abrupt, and I was able to move again. I bolted upright, hyperventilating. I looked all around me, and there was nothing, no sign of the creature. I turned on the light, and the door to my bedroom was closed. I looked at my stereo, and behind it, the Christmas light cords were still there. Like many people whose stories I've heard of sleep paralysis, I was able to go back to sleep again very quickly. I don't know why I wasn't more scared or unable to sleep. It was like the whole experience was so exhausting that once I verified I wasn't in danger, I passed out. I remember making a mental note to myself as I lay back down that I would never sleep on my back again. I've always had very vivid dreams and nightmares, but nothing so real and as terrifying as this. Also mm -hmm. along the same lines of strange sleep encounters from the age of about 4 to 16, I used to wake up after just falling asleep to what sounded like a group of people calling my name in an echoing fashion and someone poking my third eye very sharply and abruptly. Nothing would be there, of course. Not sure why these things always touch my forehead. Any thoughts? Thanks for sharing my story. I'll write again soon with more encounters. Some of these include strange things that happened at a friend's birthday party after playing light as a feather, stiff as a board, oh, and dear. of a friend's experience with a sighing, child-sized shadow woman in his apartment bathroom. Mm. Cheers. And that was from Carrie. Okay. You know, I just, I kind of think the whole thing that happened was a sleep paralysis experience that seems so real, but I, I don't know that any of it actually happened. Well, you know, I just am still of the persuasion that I think maybe that sleep paralysis is some sort of conduit 
could be, yeah. You know? And so you're kind of like a medium at that point. And you are getting things in, you know, when that sort of thing happens. Um, do you could it have been some sort of demon or bat evil spirit or something, you know, of that nature? Maybe. You know, it doesn't seem like it had any lasting effects. Uh, Carrie went back to sleep and, you know, the next day seemed to be okay. And, you know, there ha has, you know, they haven't seemed to have any, you know, ill effects from this necessarily, other than just being somewhat traumatized from the experience itself, but nothing lingering that they've seen, right? Right, so, but I just don't want to ever believe that that would have happened to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, but it's so real when it does. That's why I'm always just like, I just think there's something to it. I don't want to scare Carrie, but I kind of believe you, Carrie, that maybe something kind of did happen to you. I don't know. It's just I've had that experience. I mm -hmm. didn't see what she saw, but, it you know, more than once. Gosh, I don't know how many times I've had sleep paralysis. A dozen or more, probably. Maybe 20 I mean, I, it used to happen to me frequently when I was mm -hmm. young. I I don't. I like to hope I, at my age, I've grown out of it and it won't ever happen again because it hasn't happened for probably seven, eight, nine years. Yeah. But it was just so real. But I don't think it was there. And maybe something was there. But for me, it was so terrifying. There was no going back to sleep. Yeah. It was like, because I was so afraid to fall back to sleep and have that happen. Mm hmm. Yeah. But I also no, I, had never heard about the sleeping on your back thing at that point. Yeah. Well, I agree. And, you know, I've had things that have happened. And, you know, I, I have a hard time getting back to sleep. Like, I'm up, I'm got the light on, I'm reading a book or something, it's something else, you know. Um, but. Sometimes when you go through a trauma, it does just take everything out of you. Mm -hmm. And you are exhausted. Well, you would be after that. The damn thing pressed its forehead against her forehead. Like, could that get any scarier? No. no. That is just I, horrifying. I just think there's something to sleep paralysis that opens up something. Because my question is, Okay, great. So it's something that, why don't you ever have sleep paralysis and it's Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory? Maybe you do, but because you're not terrified, you know, you might be in that deep of a sleep state and you're having something happy happen and it's not terrifying. So it's not remarkable. Because who wants to wake up from being in a chocolate factory? Nobody. Nobody, you know, so but I'm not still trying saying, to open your eyes. I don't know. I think there might be something to it. I don't know. You I know. had just never thought about it that way until that moment. So I don't know. <laughs> but if I was Carrie, I'd be like, that dream was creepy because I would not like to think that had really happened. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to a call. Um, when I had measles... As a child, I had a very high fever, and my mom would catch me talking to somebody, and she would say, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? And I would say, Grandpa Reed. Um, it's Grandpa. He's here. He's talking to me. And she would say, no, he, you just you have a high, high fever, because I had the measles. And, but I would just be in the room like staring at the wall, talking to somebody. And she said, you know, she would come in. Who are you talking to? Grandpa Reed, Grandpa Reed. So she started asking questions, like, okay, details about who he was and what he was talking about. And she's like, how did you know that? Like, he died before you were even born. Like, and so she started to get freaked out because she was like, you can't know those things. Like you can't know those details. You can't know that information because he died before you were born. And then she start. She said, "I remember. I was like, kind of in delirium a little bit, and I was laying in the bed. And like I said, I had a really high fever. 
so she started to listen to me talk and she's like, Erin, like, how, you can't remember those things. All those things happened before you were born. And I kept talking to him and I was talking to her and I was talking to him. She's, and she was like, how? She's like, no, all these things happened before you were born. I was like, well, he's here. He's here and he's talking to me and he's holding my hand and you know, he's telling me everything's going to be okay. And I was talking to her about where they lived and their life and um, the things they did and their experiences. And she's like, Ian, mm, but you, she's like, how would you ever even know this stuff? I was like, well, because Grandpa's telling me about it. I was like, well, he's here. He's been here. He's been holding me. He's been taking care of me. He's been talking to me, he's safe, and, and telling me that I was, I, I would be okay. And it was like, and after, um, after I, I got better, she still talks about it. She says, oh my gosh, Anne, I can't, I can't believe, like, the grandfather got you through your illness. He sat by you the whole time. And he wasn't really there. He was there. It was very sweet. If anybody has an angel, I mean, ghost stories are kind of scary sometimes. He he sat at the end of my bed. I could see him. I had never met him, but I could see him sitting at the end of my bed. And he would tell me about how my dad was little and what they did and um, how they ran their logging um, business. It was very sweet, very, very loving. So, I mean, it could have been the fever because <laughs> I, I had, I almost died. So, but she didn't believe me. Anyway. And then it ends. But that's okay. interesting at the very end because then the mom the whole time is just incredulous. Like, how would you know this? How would you know this? But then she didn't believe at the end. I guess not. That kind of surprised me because, yes, I definitely think that was caused by a fever because you were so incredibly sick that someone came to look after you. That's what it feels like to me. Mm hmm In that, and if your child is telling you things that your child has no way of knowing and saying that he was there, now, can you explain that? And maybe the mom's like totally doesn't want to believe in stuff like that, so rather just shut it down. Well, I think there's possibilities here. One is you've got a guardian spirit who was there and, you know, kind of seeing you through this that's what really I think difficult it was, sickness. 100%. I, I think that's possible. Um, the other thing we don't know is what were you telling, like, what did he say? So, like, if you were to say, well, it was Grandpa Reed and he said that dad used to like to play baseball or something, you know, something kind of generic, not very specific stuff that you would that might make mom go well yeah you know like that's you know Every boy you could plays guess baseball. those things right so it depends to me a little bit on how specific the story's got that you seem to know mm -hmm. you know and maybe you were saying dad used to like to do this and mom didn't know you know maybe he did maybe he didn't well and you she know. did say he told me about how they ran their logging business which i thought that was kind of interesting and so how specific did you get on that did it just be like well he was telling me logging business stories you know and that's kind of generalized information so i don't know it depends to me the proof would be in how specific the stories were that you seem to know mm -hmm. right but I'm just going to say, yeah, your grandfather, your great grandfather or great grandfather, Reed, was there and was a guide for you to protect you and keep you safe that's while you I were feel very, very it. sick. Yeah, that's how I feel about it, too. Yeah, that's what I think. I, so we're just going to say, I don't know why your mom doesn't want to believe it, but that's OK. She gets to have her own beliefs. <laughs> but I 100 percent. Percent believe that grandpa was there. Yeah. So if you have a real ghost story, we'd love to hear it. If you want to call it in, 
call 855-853-4802 if you'd prefer to write it in. Go to realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you'd like to be a premium subscriber, you can decide that. There's no commercials, advanced episodes, and access to all of the archive. You can sign up through Apple Podcasts or go to patreon.com slash realghoststories or ghostpodcast.com. And for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thanks for listening.